Okay guys, that was a brilliant start to the group stages. Two big games and we picked up two good wins. Now it's time for us to really take control of this group double header against the familiar cow team, which we've done well against in the past. Let's win both of these games and get on the brink of qualifying. everyone and welcome to episode number 192 of Who Civic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we play our third and fourth games of the group stage of this season's Champions League and both of those games are against Firmino Cal out of Portugal as well as that we will check in on the double header between Arsenal and Cologne in our group and also have a look at how HK and Phil Kier are getting on down in the Europa League so if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but this is what the group does look like off the back of the first game for this season's champions league earlier on this week if you did miss that episode where we did take on cologne at home and then arsenal away i'll leave a link to that one over in the top right corner, but as you can see, obviously on screen, through those results, things did go quite well, picking up a 2-1 win at home against Cologne, followed by a 2-0 win away at the Emirates against Arsenal. The scorelines of those games probably didn't quite reflect the actual patterns of those games. I'd argue that the scorelines probably should be reversed when you did see the stats out of those games, but nonetheless, we did pick up two wins, and that does put us in a strong position to be getting out of this group already, as long as we don't blow things in today's episode and can get the job done over a familiar cow team who we have had quite a good record over in the past. If we go over to the past meetings, you'll see we met these guys back in the 2035 Champions League group stages. That was one of the times we did win the Champions League, and we bet them 6-0 at home, followed by 3-0 away. If we can do similar today, we'll get ourselves into a very good position, both on points as well as goal differential, just in case things don't go to plan in tomorrow's episode when we do take on Cologne and Arsenal. Yet again, but we get a good chance here, as I mentioned in the intro, to really take control of this group and also try and make sure that we do close the gap on Portugal on that coefficient table with Familicao being out of Portugal. These could be some quite useful points to try and continue to close that gap between 7th and 6th on the coefficient table, but they are a four-star reputation club. They have been in Europe a few seasons in a row now, usually a team who does seem to struggle, though, in the Champions League group stages and hopefully that will be the case again today as they do take us on and this should be a team at this stage of the save we are very very capable of beating and hopefully do it in quite comfortable fashion as well going back over to what the group does look like though you may have noticed before there had been an early kickoff in our group on this third match day and that is why Arsenal were on six points they did pick up an away win there against Cologne so at the moment they are definitely in pole position to be finishing second in this group. There was a situation where if each of Arsenal and Cologne did win against each other in today's episode, we could be right on the brink of qualifying out of this group, only needing one point from tomorrow's episode when we do take those two teams on. That would probably be the ideal situation, but nonetheless, it does look like Arsenal might be putting themselves into a strong position to finish second and maybe give themselves a chance to overtake us on the points table for that top seed going into that first knockout round draw at the end of tomorrow's episode. But nonetheless, if we can win both of our games in today's episode, we should still be in a good position as long as we don't perform too badly against those two teams in tomorrow's episode. But as I mentioned earlier, these should be two games today, which we are very, very capable of winning. Just a quick update on what we do look like going into these games today. Just one injury that carries over from the last episode, that is that Bruno Costa is still out with his torn wrist ligaments. He will be missing for both of the games in today's episode, I think, but should be back for that big double header tomorrow, where hopefully we won't need to do too much work to secure a top spot in this group, but that does mean that our first choice 11 in terms of starters are available. It just means that Narek keeps his spot on the bench, and it will be Basicki on the bench as the other midfield backup with Basiloge making his way back into that starting 11. So we're pretty strong going into these games as long as there are no injuries 
happening in between the two games, which it shouldn't be, because we don't have any more competitive fixtures having wrapped up the domestic season. And we'll come back shortly. And this first game is from my arena as we try and really take control of this group in the first game against Famila Cow. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. There we are as we ran through before our best 11 in terms of the bench is Voskanyan in there for Bruno Costa. So it should be a team which hopefully can get some goals here against Famila Cow playing a 4-3-3, quite a narrow one. And hopefully we can take control of this group by the end of today's episode. And only one minute into this one, we have our first highlight, a throw inside the final third, which Jonathan Berger will take from the cow, uh, playing in an all-white uniform. Ali Ramadan there with a shot. I think that was actually blocked by Ben Venu Bayer, but nonetheless, we are still on the attack. A good slide tackle there on Bayer, though, from Amalo, and Familiar Cow will clear their lines, and they do pump this deep into Basaro Gay, but hopefully we can create one more chance here in this opening highlight, which it looks like. Might be a bit of a long one as Ali Ramadan gets back and does pass that one forward to Ognar Miskic. And we still try and take our time here to get something going down our left-hand side. Nice ball there from Bayer for Lasana Dumbia. It's a first-time finish. Puts that away near enough to the bottom right corner. And that is a very, very good start here against our Portuguese opposition. Less than two minutes gone. And we grab a 1-0 lead. Some good early pressure. Nice ball here from Bayer. And it's a first-time finish. From Lasana Dombia on the bounce too. So it's a really good finish. Puts that away. 1-0 Volsinger. Nice and early. And about 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal. We have our next highlight here. It starts with a goal kick to Familiar Cow. And we somehow get the ball back there through Agustin Agatigare. Good chance here for Bayer as he gets in behind. It's a little bit messy. But Bayer does get a shot off. Goes for the top right corner. It does come off the post. But we are all over Familiar Cow here early. But it does remain 1-0. Albeit another highlight not too long off the back of that previous one. And we do have a free kick here deep inside our own half and do look to play out from the back. Danelli will switch that one out to Redenko Krolo. Takes his time, plays that forward for Agatigare. Nice long ball over the top again here. This time for Adam Saki. Buries that into the bottom left corner. That's his 41st goal of the season these days. I think he's our record goal scorer here in the save at the club. And he picks up another one. Does the Ballon d'Or winner, his first one, of the game and today's episode and that will make it 2-0 after only 13 minutes and already that should be enough of an advantage to secure us three points here. 2-0 Volsinger just shy of the 15 minute mark and very shortly off the back of that second goal yet another highlight and Familiar Cow were on the attack but did give the ball away and yet again we get a chance here to build from the back. It does look like today we are starting this one off in quite good form. Hopefully that continues and we can put this game to bed very, very early on indeed, if we haven't done so already. And the Alessandro Dumbia will play that one back out to the right-hand side. And to Krolo, Agatigare just holding things up here. Tries to get beyond his man. Plays that forward for Redenko Krolo. Just in a tiny bit of space. Finds Lasana Dumbia back to Krolo. Puts that far post for Mizkic. But his header does go just over the bar. And it is still 2-0 Volsinger. Just past the 15-minute mark. And in fact, right off the back of that previous highlight, yet again, we have another one. Carl Volan here. Just outside the box will take his time on the ball. And yet again, we are looking to play out from the back here through both Denali and Ramadan. And now Basaroge involved there slotting back in that halfback row. We'll get that out to Jonathan Berger. And this time we're going to try and get something going down our left-hand side. Berger with the overlap. Gets back on the ball. Plays it for Mizkic. Back in there for Bayer to Jonathan Berger. Good short passing here. And now it's Dombia on the edge of the box. And that is a really good strike. We'll curve that into the right-hand corner and just shy of the 20-minute mark, we already have a 3-0 lead and surely that will be enough for us to grab three points in this first game of today's episode. Some good sustained build-up there, controlling possession well and then a good finish from Lasana and Dumbia on the edge of the box, 3-0 Volsinger. And going forward now to the 26-minute mark and yet again we have a throw but this time Jonathan Berger does give the ball straight to Familiar Cow, albeit they head that back into our path, and Berger will try and pick out Dumbia there around about on the edge of the box, but they do hit it back, do Familiar Cow, and will keep possession. Of course, it is now Lasana Dumbia who is on a hat trick, but for now, Familiar Cow do get a chance here to try and play out from the back, and they do keep possession at the moment and get up towards the halfway line, albeit they try a ball over the top, and Ali Ramadan is there and has a ball over the top looking for Adam Saki, but too much on that, and Perez is there 
support for Miller Cow, but these guys need a big comeback from here if they are to take any points out of Iceland and try and keep themselves in the hunt to make their way out of this group. But now Adam Saki gets in behind. It's a tight angle off the ball from Rodenko Krollo, but somehow slots that in between that near post and the Familiar Cow goalkeeper. And just like that, Familiar Cow, well and truly in the mud today, that is now 4 0, just shy of the half hour mark. Krollo with a ball over the top. Good run from Saki, and it's a decent finish there from a very tight angle and 4 0 Volsunga, just shy of the half hour mark. And just entering injury time in this first half, still for 4-0 lead, and we do have a late throw on here, and we do get the ball back there through Ben Benu Bayer, passing it on the edge of the box first off Lasana Dumbia with a block shot, but on the next chance that Agatigare did set up from, he will complete a first half hat trick, and we are really flying here in this first game of today's episode. That makes it 5-0 right on the stroke of halftime. Bayer there, able to win the ball back. Dumbia, strong shot, forces a decent save out of Perez. And then on the second time, gets a little bit of help off the woodwork on the assist from Aga Tigare, and he will pick up a first half hat trick, and that will make it 5 0 at half time. Absolutely dominating for Miller Cow here, and we are in a strong position already. Should be picking up three points from this first game of today's episode and making it nine from nine to start off the group stages, playing very well. So, absolutely no need to make any substitutions. We'll come back shortly with the second half. We kick it off with a 5-0 lead. And only a few seconds into the second half, we do have a highlight here, starting off with a goal kick to Familiar Cow. They pump it deep, but Basaro Gay is there to win us position back. And yet again, we get a good chance here to get on the front foot early in this half, this time already with a 5-0 lead. And Lasana Dumbia in the action there, already with a hat-trick. Now Redenko Krolo finds some space here inside the box. Onya Mizkic goes for the top right corner. Thought there might be a little bit more space there going for the top left, but nonetheless, he finds the back of the net. He gets himself on the score sheet, and that makes it 6-0 around about the 46-minute mark, and this could be a long day at the office for Familiar Cow. We might be looking at Celtic or Liverpool territory the way this is going. A great start to the second half, and it is already 6-0 Volsinger. And just shy of the 17-minute mark, we are going to make our first substitution. No highlights since that opening goal here in the second half, but Lasana Dumbia down to a red heart, he's picked up a hat-trick, we'll give him a rest, especially with Bruno Costa, still injured I think, we'll bring on Voskanyan for him, and Ben Venu Bayer can switch to the box-to-box -box role for these last 22 minutes. And five minutes off the back of that first substitution, time for our second one, this time Basaro Gay, down to a red heart, Alain Basicki to come on for him. And yet again, only a few minutes off the back of that previous substitution, yet again another player of ours is down to a red heart. This time it is Ognya Mizkic, Christopher Alagab will come on for him. That's all of our subs used, 14 minutes left, and we still have a 6-0 lead. And just entering injury time in this one, it's been a very quiet second half since we did get that early goal through Ognya Mizkic, and as well as that we did pick up five in the first half, so already did pretty much have the job done in the end. A very, very comprehensive performance, pretty much everyone who got out on the field with a rating, got themselves into the green, and in the end it was driven by a Lasana Dumbia hat-trick in the first half, and we do pick up a very, very comfortable 6-0 in which at the very least is going to be quite useful for that goal differential if we do stuff things up in tomorrow's episode, but that is a very good start, making it nine points from three games, and we are now top of the group by three points over Arsenal. We'll come back shortly. I don't think there should be many changes to our team before that second game against Familiar Cow, but we will come back and check in on HK and Phil Kerr in the Europa League before the rematch in Portugal. And we are back prior to the second game of today's episode against Familiar Cow. Before then, we are going to be exactly the same going into that game, so we'll pretty much get straight back into the action. But just a quick Europa update. First up, we have HK in Group C. Of course, in the last episode, they picked up quite a good result away against St. Etienne. Unfortunately, not quite as good a result this time as they did travel to Serbia to take on Kulabara, they did concede a first half penalty, which did put them behind at half time. Thankfully, they did get a goal back in the second half, but could only pick up a point there against the team who previously had not picked up any in that group. So they are still ahead of San Etienne. Of course, those guys suffering a pretty heavy defeat there to a Liverpool team who do look like they're going to be head and shoulders above everyone else in that group. But slightly disappointing result there for HK, albeit they do still find themselves second in that group one point above St. Etienne. Hopefully, they can get a better result in the home game against that same opposition off the back of this upcoming game that we are about to play. 
And going down to Group E and Phil Kerr, unfortunately their run of bad form does continue here in the Europa League off the back of picking up nothing in the last episode. They suffer a 2-0 defeat there also away in Serbia as they did take on Red Stars. So they are looking like they are going to be in quite a bit of bother trying to make their way into the knockouts of a European competition this season already four points behind both Red Star and Lead. And of course, Napoli, just like Liverpool in Group C, they look like they are going to be well and truly head and shoulders above everyone else in this group as well. So Phil Kier in a bit of trouble. HK, slightly disappointing result there, but they do still look on to make their way into the knockouts of European football, especially if they can pick up a win in that rematch in Iceland against Kola Barra. But as I mentioned before, we are going to be exactly the same going into this next game of the group stage rematch. From that first game of today's episode, we'll come back shortly from Portugal and try and make sure that we make it 12 from 4 as we take these guys on in the fourth game of this group. And we have a highlight immediately from the kickoff here in the second game of today's episode. It does look like the teams are in exactly the same uniforms as they were for that first game as well. This one could be a bit trickier away from home, but based on that 6-0 when we did pick up at my arena, you'd like to think. We can pick up another three points here away in Portugal and try and match what we did do against these guys only two seasons ago in the group stages as well. And of course, that would also help on that coefficient table, as I mentioned earlier. But it was familiar cow here who were on the attack. But thankfully, we get a slide tackle in there and we do get the ball back. And now we look to play out from the back as Ali Ramadan does take his time over the ball back to Basaro Gay. He takes his time as well. And now it's Filippo Dinelli who does start to try and get us going forward here to start off this game. Lasana Dombia fresh off the back of a hat-trick, plays that one forward to Aga Tigere. Adam Saki will put that in the top left corner. We might just wait here though, because he did look like he might just be a straight offside to start off this game. But in fact, he is onside and yet again, it is a flying start for us here against Familiar Cow. Adam Saki picks up his 43rd goal of the season and buries that in the top left corner and already here in Portugal, we make it 1-0 Volsinger. And we go forward to the 26 minute mark for our next highlights of things. Not quite as frantic as they were early in that game back in Iceland. For Cow here though, do have a throw and they get the ball out to Santos on their left hand side. But it is Lasana Dumbia who does get in there and get position back for us. And now Rodenko Krolo will hoof one deep for Adam Saki. What can he do here? Tries to somewhat take that around the goalkeeper, but tries to chip Perez in the end. It's a safe save and it is still 1-0 just shy of the half hour mark. And a few minutes shy of half time, we have a corner here, which Bussero Gay gets on the end of, but just puts that over the bar. We are well and truly on top here of the Malikaus. We have yet another highlight, but unlike the first game, not as efficient in front of goal just yet. Hopefully we get our eight into gear here. And there's a fortunate slide tackle, a couple of chances there for Bayer to slot through Adam Saki. And eventually he puts that in the back of the net, a very similar finish to one that he did produce in that first game past the goalkeeper at his near post. There were definitely a few chances there for Benvenu Bayer to get this ball to Adam Saki. First off the block pass from Cesar, and then eventually he sets up Saki. Probably just overcooked that pass, but still Adam Saki is able to put that one in the back of the net. We nearly butchered that chance, but thankfully we do get our cushion goal, and that will give us a 2-0 lead here going into half time. So certainly not quite as good as that first game was at the same stage, we are still in a strong position. Yet again, I don't think we need too many changes here at half time. So hopefully we can kick on a little bit more and pick up another three points. 2-0 as we get the second half underway. And just shy of 10 minutes into the second half, we have our first highlight as Perez will pump that deep for Familiar Cow. But thankfully, Berger was there to head that ball back to Volum. We start to build here and Ognjan Miskic starts to make his way down the left-hand side. We'll play a ball over the top here. For Adam Saki holds things up, squares that one nicely for Agustin Agatigare. We strike either side of half time and we get a 3 0 lead now. And yet again, it does look like we are going to pick up three points here against Familiar Cow. It was Familiar Cow briefly on the attack there, but that was a bit of a quick counter attack. Saki squares that one for Agatigare off the initial pass from Mizkic, puts it away bottom right corner, and that makes it 3 0 Volsinger. And a few minutes off the back of that goal to open up the second half. It's a free kick here for Lasana Dumbia. Looking for that top left corner. It forces a decent save there though out of Perez. We'll see if anything does come from the subsequent corner. We put this one into the mixer, but we can't quite link up with Basaro Gay. That is that highlight, but very shortly 
off the back of that one. We are down the other end here for a free kick to Familiar Cow as they look to get on the score sheet, albeit a poor pass, which Berger gets on the end of. Long ball over the top here for Adam Saki. We'll try and put this one away, but he chips the goalkeeper. So much on that one, and it will still be 3-0 at the hour mark. And while we're here, we're going to make a few substitutions. Ali Ramadan has just picked up a yellow card, so Richard Waswa can come on for him. Also, Mizkic down to a 6.4, so Ali Gab will come on for him as well. Two of our subs used in 3-0 up with a half hour left. And just inside the last 20 minutes of this one now, still with our 3-0 lead, and it's a goal kick here to Familiar Cow, but yet again we win the ball in the air this time through Richard Waswa, who is off the bench, and Dumbi a nice ball here for Adam Saki, but that forces a good save there from Perez at that near side, but we are going to have yet another corner, which hopefully we can make the most of and try and get this out to a 4-0 scoreline, but Sadie is there to clear that away. For Familiar Cow, we'll see if anything else does come from this highlight. They are in a lot of space here, right on the edge of the box. Waswa there for Basaro Gay, plays this one in for Agatigro, gets brought down, but apparently there is no foul there in Familiar Cow. We'll try and get something going on the counter attack. That is that highlight. It is still 3 0, and now we do have Lasana Dumbia down to a red heart. We'll play things safe, take him off. Same sub as the previous game for Scanyan will come on for him and Bayer into the box-to-box -box role for the last 15 minutes, all of our subs used, and still with a 3-0 no lead. And nearly inside the last 10 minutes of this one, we do have a free kick here for Agatigare, yet again forcing a decent save out of Perez, went for the top left corner, even though that free kick was taken from the other side. We'll see if anything does happen from the subsequent corner, but Basaro Gay does miss the target, still 3-0 here, as we do get now inside these last 10 minutes, we have a free kick going far post. Waswa will get ahead on the end of that, but Basaro Gay is able to put the rebound in the back of the net, albeit we are waiting for a VAR check to see if the scoreline does get out 2-4-0, and we wait for VAR, but unfortunately that goal is going to be disallowed this time. He was offside to no goal there to Basaro Gay, and as you can see quite clearly, everyone from us there is offside still 3-0 as we approach full time in this one. And just about to end injury time in the second game of today's episode, and the second one against Familiar Cow as well as expected. We do pick up two wins against these guys. Another very dominant display, not quite as efficient in front of goal, but we still do the job there thanks to two goals. Two Adam Saki and Agustin Agatira gets on the score sheet as well, and he also picked up an assist for that first Adam Saki goal as well. So in the end, that's two good performances against Familiar Cow, and that will make sure we are top of the group going into those final two games against Cologne and Arsenal. In tomorrow's episode, we'll come back shortly, see what happens in the late kickoff between Arsenal and Cologne at the Emirates. Update you guys on what the group does look like off the back of that game, as well as check in on both HK and Phil Kier again down in the Europa League. And we are back a few days off the back of that second win against Familiar Cow in today's episode. And as you can see, a slight upset win there in the other game in our group on that fourth match week. It was Cologne picking up a win away from home. This time it was a by a scoreline of 1-0. So as we mentioned at the start of today's episode, it did happen where Cologne and Arsenal did take wins off each other, albeit in the opposite fixtures than we were expecting, both away wins. And that will mean in tomorrow's episode where we do take on Cologne away first and then Arsenal at my arena. We just need one point from those two games to secure top spot in this group. If we pick up that one point, neither Cologne or Arsenal will be able to go above us and we can have a big influence as well in that episode on who also makes their way into the knockouts of the Champions League in that second spot as it might depend on the results which the teams do pick up against us as well as goal differential at the moment. Cologne have the slight advantage on that with a goal differential of three compared to nil, which Arsenal do have. So at the moment, Cologne in pole position for that second spot in the group, but it does depend on how teams do perform against us. In tomorrow's episode, and before we do wrap things up for today as well, we'll go down and check in on the other Icelandic teams in the Europa League. And in Group C, unfortunately, things quite similar to what they were on the first game of today's episode on that third match day, the fourth match day, quite similar HK yet again, only managing a draw against Serbian opposition this time though, they go off to a flyer for a Burnson penalty, but then a red card after 10 minutes, and it was Kolobara who'd got a goal in the 69th minute, and that does mean that yet again they drop points against the team 
who are currently bottom of the group, albeit because St. Etienne also suffered a red card and got hammered by Liverpool. They are in still quite a strong position to be getting out of that group, albeit tomorrow. They firstly take on Liverpool away from home at Anfield. They're probably going to get slaughtered there, and that could set up a big game in the second one of tomorrow's episode as they do host St. Etienne, who they did, of course, beat on the second match week. If they can win that one, they will go through in second spot no matter what and make their way into the Europa League knockouts for a second straight season and going over to Group E to check in on Phil Kerr. They finally have picked up a point. Both teams getting red cards, and it was Phil Kerr with an 89th minute goal there. So they pick up their first points of the Europa League group stage against Red Star. So at the moment, these Iceland versus Serbian affairs do look feisty on this fourth match day, but still Phil Kerr in a lot of trouble. Napoli, surprisingly, dropping points there, but they still have already qualified and should probably be doing so in top spot as well. Out of that group, there's a sneaky chance Phil Kerr could work their way into a Conference League knockout spot, but they will need to perform very well away against Leeds in Austria and then at home against Napoli. And I think it is fair to say, at least in the latter of those games, that is a very, very unlikely scenario. But that will do it for today's episode. We'll just go back to our Champions League group. We are in a very, very good position, just needing one point from our last two games coming up. In tomorrow's episode, the first of those, as I said earlier, against Cologne. And off the back of that, we do host Arsenal. And also, we should also in and around then have an end of season review as well. We will probably get through that a little bit quicker than we usually do with those two games as well, of course, as the first knockout round draw for the Champions League as well, provided that we do not absolutely bottle things and end up down in the knockouts of the Europa League. But if you did enjoy today's episode, two good wins there against Fimala Cow, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well and until tomorrow where we wrap up the group stages for the champions league this season and hopefully see who we get in the first knockout round of the champions league as well thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and i'll see you then cheers